okay today we'll discuss about uh, timestamp extraction using props.com file okay so timestamp extraction plays a crucial role uh, in splunk events because for each and every event whatever the time we are time we are extracting is basically becoming the underscore time value of that event right and that basically says what time that event occurs so that underscore time using that underscore time basically we can do a lot of analysis like um, based on the time like when that event occurs and for a particular time how how many event occur something like that so underscore time is very much important in splunk so in this video we'll see how from each and every event we can extract times um, so it's basically a good practice whenever in any application generating event right there should be a timestamp associated with that event as well so that 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 time can be um, extracted by by these configurations so mainly we'll be discussing some of these configurations today so as you may have seen before uh, in my previous video we talked about index uh, sorry we talked about line breaking of that uh, event right um, so today we'll see from that those events how we can extract time so while doing that i think we discussed some of the configurations like this time prefix max time look ahead time format right so we will try to see the similar kind of example today so i have taken this data i think i have used this in my previous video as well this this logs okay and if you see each and every log file have this time format we have the gmt and after that the whole time format we'll see how to do that okay so to do that first we will uh, talk about data one file which just now i have shown to you okay so let us let us first line break this event using uh, using our this one break only before date then we will see the other different time extraction methods so we'll go to settings add data so i'm using splunk 7.2.1 now so it may be this interface may look a little bit different but functionality wise it is same so upload is now coming below side so i'm clicking on upload so we'll first talk about data one okay so quickly i will be doing uh, that setting so break only before date as i mentioned is true right so whenever you are mentioning this one you need the time prefix this is a timestamp extraction configuration that has to be true so time prefix is only required when your timestamp has some kind of prefix so for us we have gmt right so it will be gmt now time format you need to give the time format as well so that splunk will be able to uh, determine what kind of date format it is so that it, it can correspondingly um, parse the data and then you need to go to max timestamp look ahead so i'll be adding this settings as well so max timestamp look at is basically telling us after the time prefix okay so what is the maximum number of character positions splunk needs to find the time format so basically if i remove the gmt part and if you see it is coming as length as 24 so that's why i have given 24 here okay so if i apply that so splunk is automatically creating those breaking those uh, whole chunk of raw data into different different events right now if you see here splunk is automatically complaining about this particular event what it is saying this part the time format specified here it's outside the acceptable time window okay now what is acceptable time window here now if i closely see these events the times so our current time is december 10 right 10 59 pm so basically if you see this particular event it's for today only right now this particular event it's after two days if you see it's a 12 12 and this particular event is from 13 so basically we are talking about future events here right now Splunk is accepting this future events, but it is not accepting this future event because 
there is a settings called max days hence okay now what it does mean so it means in future how many days you can have the future events in future so by default it is two days that's why it is accepting this 12th event but it is not accepting the 13th right now whenever it is not able to accept any event basically the parse the timestamp okay if you see here for 10th the timestamp it is already extracted as 10 for 12th it is timestamp extracted as 12 but if you see the 13th event the timestamp extract is as 10 only okay so our purpose is to if you if you want to allow this event that means if you want to extract the time um, from this event accordingly so that should be coming as 13 right so you have to you have to work with this max days hence if i give three here okay apply settings now if you see the big uh, the event time is becoming 13 okay so i'll i'll just remove this and apply settings okay uh, it, it does not went back okay let me go back select the data again okay. advanced new settings so break only before date is true then time prefix is gmt and then time format is our time format and then max timestamp look ahead is 24 apply settings now if you see uh, i just wanted to delete that because i need to discuss another stuff here now if you see why it has chosen 10 instead of 12 because the logic is whenever it is not able to parse the timestamp properly it takes the timestamp from the previously successfully extracted timestamp from the previous event only so if the if you if you see the previous events is successfully extracted is the 10 12 right that's why it is giving the same same date format now now if if splunk do not find any of the previously events successfully extracted timestamp with successfully extracted timestamp it will take the either file modification time if you are talking about file uh, upcoming file in, as the input or it it will take the time set by forwarder input at the input layer okay so we'll see that one as well in in another example okay so that is how uh, max days hence work now let's talk about another one another example okay a negative case where none of our events are matching with this falling with this with this range okay let then let's see how how it's working over there so to do that i will work with data one underscore negative case here okay i'll go to next similarly for advanced i will just do quickly before day two time prefix GMT time format or time format max timestamp look ahead is 24 let's apply this okay now if you see this particular event all has date as 13th that means which is basically falling outside of that two days by default window right and if you see all the date is it has chosen as 10 now from where it got 10 this is the file the file i am using date one underscore negative case if you see if i show you here okay this is the file modification timestamp so it has taken that one okay so this is how it works now let's move ahead so there is a another settings 
this opposite of max day hints is the max days ego so max days hints talk about in the future max days ego talk about in the past so let's let's see that one so for that we have our data to file so i'll just do that one i will quickly do that one for date true our time prefix as gmt our time format as this one and then max timestamp look ahead okay 24 now if i apply this if you see here even though all the events are from the past right if you see all from 8 7 and 10th right so if you see these two at least are from the past but splunk is not complaining because that max days ago the by default value is i think 2000 days okay so to see whether how max days ago works let's add this particular settings over here and let's give it a very small number let's say two if i apply now if you see for these two events splunk is complaining because the max days ago by default value is two then so those are falling outside of it okay both both are falling outside of it okay so that's why um, this this for two these this two events it is basically and now if you see the timestamp as well for these two events there is no previous event which has uh, successfully extracted timestamp so that's why it is taking the file modification time okay um, so this is how max days ago is ago work okay now there is another settings called add extra time fields add extra time fields so let's talk about that before we talk about other time settings so to do that let us index this one okay so i'll just click on next i'll give a source type name called demo okay it will be stored in the search and reporting app click on save so default i'll say main review submit S searching okay so now if you see here when i index this data right apart from those those field value there are a lot of date hour date name day minute month second this value also getting indexed okay if you see in in real time scenario as well whenever you index the data all these fields will be by default added by splunk so if you don't want to do that okay so there is a settings called this one add x add extra time fields this is taking either true and false value so you can if i make it false so to just to demo it i'll just delete this data index equals to main then delete okay i'll just okay i just need to add that role so this is how if you do not able to delete any data from your index because of insufficient privilege this is what you need to do to go to settings plunks okay you need to go to add roles you need to click on the admin role currently i'm administrator so click on admin role even admin role cannot have uh, by default that can delete role so you need to apply this candidate role to yourself okay and then click on save okay so now let's go back to our settings add data so we'll go to upload we'll select the data to here okay we'll click on next and now we will be doing in the same way i'll be going to advance and then time back only before date is true then new settings time prefix equals to gmt and then time format is equals to this time format and then 
timestamp look ahead is equals to 24 and then the new settings call this one add extra time fields okay so if i add this one to false okay and click on apply settings click on next i'll give it a name called demo click on save preview submit start searching okay if you see those extra time extra time fields are gone now okay so that is the use case of um, add extra time fields now there are a couple of other settings called max diff second seco and max diff seconds hence so this um, settings are important when you have multiple sources in your system and all the sources through a forwarder are providing data to your indexer right so in that case these settings are very much useful. This the max diff seconds ago are basically telling Splunk that the current event you are indexing and the previous event comes. There is a this much gap in the in seconds in the timestamp field. The seconds this much gap. So I think the default value is uh, one hour. So you can play around with this value when you have multiple sources. It is always a possibility that there will be a huge time gap between them. So you can play around this max div seconds ago and max div second hence. So seconds ago talk about in past okay and um, second hence talk about in future so similar concept of max days ago and max days hence um, apart from that you can have your own time zone specifier in your uh, props.conf as well so that all events will go by that time zone um, but if you have in your in in your event uh, you can you can extract time zone you can always better to use this time format to extract the time zone as well mm, time zone alias also you can you can specify where whenever you have a similar name of the time zone you can you want to differentiate among them or between them so you can have this time zone alias as a q value pairs as well mm, there is another config called date time config okay so that specifically specifies a file in splunk enterprise well let me show you that file first etc in this etc folder splunk home etc folder there is a file called date time.xml okay so all um, uh, different kinds of date time will date time related uh, configurations basically how splunk extracts the this time are stored or the logic are stored in, in here in this file so if you want your own extraction method you can create a similar file in that directory and give that name into this particular um, settings date time config file name so you can you can always give that um, okay so that that is that is how this different uh, timestamp related configurations works um, in the next video we'll talk about um, data extraction like field extraction using props.conf and transfer.com see you in next video